Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 14 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. In today's lesson, it gets into the part of the title of my lessons about die trying. <clears throat> this might be the part of Fusion 360 where half of us just roll over and die trying to figure it out. And I will say the most confusing thing to me about Fusion 360 is understanding the difference between moving an object, <clears throat> aligning an object, and joining an object. And when is the right time to use which tool and how to end up, what do we care about? We want our part or our body or our component to end up where we want it. But when we get to this part of Fusion 360, this is where it just turns out to be not very intent, uh, intuitive. But never fear. I'm going to show you how you can do it. And hopefully watching me and listening to me walk you through it, hopefully it's going to be a lot easier for you to learn than it was for me to learn. <clears throat> Let me just say one thing getting into this. If you end up in a design in Fusion 360 and you're trying to move something and it didn't go where you want and then you try to align it and then it's just you're moving, aligning, moving, aligning, moving, aligning, and then the whole thing just seems to just be taking on a mind of its own. Sometimes you just got to back out and start over because I have gotten things so, so gnarled up that I haven't been able to unwind it. And so if you're struggling and making a lot of mistakes and making a lot of mistakes, rather than just backing up and going forward, backing up, you got to just kind of go out and start again. Because sometimes I've gotten designs just so messed up, I couldn't figure out what to do. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about that. And we're going to play again with gears, all right? Because the first thing is this will be a good practice for what we learned in last week's lesson on gears. We're going to work again with gears so that you get another chance of practicing the skills that you learned from last week. So that's enough of this introductory stuff. Let's switch over to Fusion 360. Let me get out of your way. And then let's jump in and start designing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a little uh, <clears throat> base and two gears where the gears will be intermeshed. If you guys need a review on gears, go back to last week's lesson. OK, but I'm going to design that and then I'm going to show you how you can get it assembled and aligned and even animated. OK, so this is going to be a great lesson, but we are going to start by coming over here to create. And what I'm going to create is a spur gear. If you guys didn't take last week's lesson in last week's lesson, I showed you how to get this spur gear <clears throat> icon under your create menu. So we're going to make a spur gear and we're going to come over here. And on this one, I want small gears with a lot of teeth. So my module, instead of 12.7, I'm going to make 1.5. Okay. And then on the number of teeth, I want this to be the small gear. And that's why I'm going to put 12 teeth. On backlash, I think on backlash that I will have 0.1 in backlash. And then on the root fillet, I'm going to have 0.1. <clears throat> that can be small. <clears throat> gear thickness, gear thickness is 10, and then the whole diameter is 7. That should all be pretty straightforward. A module of 51 indeed would be a, a ginormous gear. I said 1.5. Let me try it again. The module, what is that nonsense? 
5. I typed it in twice as 51. <clears throat> okay, this is a small gear, a little under 2 centimeters. That sounds about right. Let's go ahead and make that. And boom, look at that. That is a lovely gear. That is a lovely gear. Now let's go ahead and move it out of the way. What's the best way to move, right? So we're going to move it out of the way because we know that other gear is going to come in at the origin as well. <clears throat> I'm sorry I clear my throat, but you know, I make these videos all day long, and as I talk all day, my throat starts getting dry. And so if you want me to keep making content, I have to do a lot of talking. And when I talk all day, my throat gets a little dry. Some people get very upset over little things like me clearing my throat. So what am I going to do? I right mouse click. I'm going to move copy. I'm going to move a body. Now, I want you to notice that the spur gear was not created as a body. It was created as a component, okay? <clears throat> and we've got to keep track of what is a body and what is a component. In fact, let me show you that. If we want to find the body, this body, we can look inside of the spur gear component, and we can see inside a body, there is this body one. I can turn it on and off. <clears throat> the body is inside the component. So you've got to be thinking, am I working with a body or am I working with a component? I can have lots of different bodies inside of a component. If I move the component, what am I going to move? I'm going to move all the bodies. If I move a body, what am I going to, inside of a component, what am I going to move? Only that body. <clears throat> so number one, keep track of whether you are working with a body or a component because you have to be mindful of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right mouse click. I'm going to move copy. Since I only have one body in the component, it doesn't really matter. I could just move the component. What do I want to move? I want to move this. Don't freehand it, because if you freehand it, you can end up with the body or the component not on the XY build plane. So I am going <clears throat> to select this axis. I'm going to select this x-axis arrow, and I can move this out of the way without a fear of it moving up and down. Now, why did I use move instead of align? and instead of join, because I don't have any other components to align to. So an, a move is just where you want to put it in an absolute position. An align is when you want to define a right relationship between related bodies or related components. And so a line is more akin to constrain in the 2D level. Okay, it's like constraint in the 2D level. You're defining relationships <clears throat> between bodies and similarly for joining. All right, so that's out of the way. Now what do we want to do? We want to create another spur gear, another involute gear. We want all the parameters the same, <clears throat> only this time we want a bigger gear and we're going to want 24 teeth like that. Okay, boom, there it is. Let's move that out of the way. Right mouse click, move copy. Why am I using move? Because I want to get it out of the way. I am not defining a relationship between these two components. I just want it out of the way. So I'm going to select this body. I'm going to select the axis. And I'm going to, or let's see, this one, let's just move. Ah, I didn't click it. Let's just move it out of the way up here. All right. <clears throat> we'll say OK, and we're going to go back to the top view. Go back to the top view, and that is all spun around. OK, so now I'm at the top view. Now I'm going to create my base. So I'm going to create a sketch, and then the sketch is going to be on the red green on the XY plane, and then I am going to go ahead and capture the position so that it just remembers <clears throat> remembers what I am doing. And so I've got my sketch created here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a base that's a little bit wider than the gear. Now the thing was when I made that gear, what did I have? I had the 
pitch diameter, but I didn't have the outside diameter. So I'm going to go measure the outside diameter. And I'm going to do that by going to inspect and measure. I'm going to come to the corner of a gear tooth and then I'm going to come over here to another corner of the gear tooth and I can see that this has an outside diameter of about 39. I'm going to call it 40. Okay. And now I want the base to be a millimeter bigger on each side. And so I want my base for this part to be 42 millimeters. So I'll get the circle <clears throat> and I will draw a circle of 42 millimeters like that. Okay, so that is good. Now I need to do the circle for this one. And the circle for this one, we're going to go in and do, you can't see what I'm talking about, can you? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to say inspect measure. I'm going to start at this tip, go to this tip, and that is 20.982. We're going to call it 21. <clears throat> and so we're going to add a millimeter to both sides, and then that would become 23. So we are ready to draw our circle. So we're going to come back over here, okay? And I'm going to draw my other circle, and I'm just going to draw it in a random location right now. And we said we wanted it to be 23 like that. Now, where should this be? The center of this point should be a distance from the, the center of this circle and the center of this circle should be ha how far apart. We need to take the pitch radius of this gear and the pitch radius of this gear and then add those two together in our tolerance and that is how far apart we should be. So I need to know what the pitch diameter of the first gear is. So I'm going to come in here and what I need to look at is I can... Uh, <clears throat> I uh, am going to go ahead and finish the sketch and I'll come back to it in a minute. But this is the sketch I was just working on. This one here that I created, it's not fully constrained because I haven't constrained the position of the circle. But we're going to go in and try to find the, the, uh, the uh, sketches for those two gears so that we can figure out what that pitch diameter is. And I knew to look at it before I turned it off, but I'm know that you'll probably forget, so I'm going to show you how to get it. So I'm going to go to the first gear, and I'm going to come down to Sketches, okay? And then I'm going to look for it, okay? It's not there. It's not, oh, there it is, right there. Okay, there it is. So you see, for me, it was this, <clears throat> for me, it's the bottom one. So if I turn the bottom one on, let me come back over here and hopefully you can see this. So I am in my first spur gear, the 12 tooth spur gear, and I come down to this third sketch and that turns in on and off my pitch diameter. So let's look and I'm going to highlight the pitch diameter. And then if I look in the bottom over in the corner, the bottom right, I can see that that pitch diameter is 18. The pitch diameter is 18. So what is the pitch radius? The pitch radius is half of that, which is nine. So I have my first number and I can get over here to this one. Now what I want to do, I'll go ahead and turn that off. <clears throat> now I want to come over to my larger gear. I want to look at sketches and I want to find that diameter. Okay, there it is there. So I'm going to click on that circle and I'm going to look in the bottom right of my screen and that circle has a pitch diameter of the gear of 36. What is the pitch radius? 18. So how far should the center points of those two gears be? The sum of the pitch radiuses, which is 9 and 18, makes 27. And then I need a tolerance. And I'm going to put a tolerance of 0.5, just so that they're not jammed together with our manufacturing uncertainty. <clears throat> so the distance should be 27, 27.5. <coughs> now what I'm going to do is come back to my original sketch that I made. I'm going to edit that sketch. I'm going to build a construction line. I'll turn construction on over here. I click on the origin. I come out how far? 27.5 like that, 
boom. Now I want this circle there. So I will use the coincident constraint and I want this point on the circle. I want it coincident with this point and boom, I've got it. Now I've got to put on my tangent lines. So I'm just going to draw, make sure I am not on construction and I am going to just draw a line from here to here. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to draw a random line from here to here. And again, I don't like to draw these lines touching the circles because I want to deliberately place my constraints and my first constraints will be tangent. This is tangent to this. 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 And now I want to make coincident. I want to make get my coincident constraints. This is coincident to this. This is coincident to this. <clears throat> this is coincident to this. This is coincident to this. And I am fully constrained. Now I just want to trim this up. So I'll say I'm going to trim that, 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 that. I like to remove all my internal solid lines on my designs. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and now draw the hub. And so if my hole was seven millimeters thick, I need a tolerance. How big should my post be? Well, I am going to make my post here. I am going to make it 6.8 millimeters, which will leave a tolerance of 0.2 millimeters. And then similarly, I will build <clears throat> a post here of 6.8 that will leave a tolerance of 0.2 and then I am not going to put the little ridge for the gears to ride on on this particular example because I'm supposed to be talking about move a line and I got to get to that pretty quick. Thank you for your patience. So let's go ahead and finish that sketch. It's fully constrained. We'll come over here. I want to make the base five so I will extrude the base by five. Okay, <clears throat> now I want to extrude my post and my post <clears throat> would need to be the gear is is 10 thick plus the five of the base would be 15 plus I want the post to stick out a little bit. So let's stick it out by one. So that would be a total of 16 if I am doing the math right. I'm going to extrude that. Let's see, it's not, uh, maybe that sketch is turned off. Yeah, if you can't see the sketch, sketch you can't extrude it. So <clears throat> come and turn on the visibility of the sketch. So I'm going to extrude that and I'm going to extrude it 16. Okay. And then I am going to choose this <clears throat> and I'm going to extrude it to a object of up here. And so boom, we have our base made. Okay, now is where we get to the nitty gritty. Let's say, like right now, let's say that I just wanted to print this. What would I do? We're talking about the difference between move and the diff between the difference between move and align and join. Okay, move, align, and join. If I were going to 3D print this, I want to get everything together and close together. The best way to do that is with move because I just want to move it over close, but it's not in some absolute alignment. It's just getting them close to print. So I would right mouse click. I would say move. <clears throat> move component is okay. Okay, move component is okay. I am going to choose this component and then I'm going to grab, I think this is the Y slider and put it here. And then the X slider is here. And I'm being very careful to not touch the Z. <coughs> Why do I not want to touch the Z? Because I want to keep it against the build plate in order to build it. So I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to right mouse click. I'm going to move. Move the component is OK. This is the component I want to move. I'll move it on the coordinate system. So I'll pull it down here. And then I will pull it over here. 
<clears throat> and that looks pretty good. Now I think if I put this gear here, it would be even more compact. So I'm going to come, I'm going to move component. I'm going to select the little gear. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to come here. And now let's look and make sure that that's not <clears throat> overlapping it's overlapping and so right about there would be good everything is close together and everything would be ready to print okay we're ready to print but if you are showing your design to a supervisor or to your design team they don't want to see a pallet load of parts they don't want to see a plane <clears throat> with a lot of parts, they want to see the assembled device and how it would work. So naturally you would want this gear <clears throat> on this hub. So your first instinct might be to come and move and then come over here and try to take this and start moving it around to align it. That doesn't work. Why? Move is to put an object in an absolute position. If you want to define a relationship <clears throat> between different components or different bodies, you do that either with a line or join. Okay, I'm going to tell you this, and if you listen to me, this will be so much easier. If you are moving bodies or, or components rel relative to each other, use a line. If you're defining motions and connections, use join. And so what I always do when I'm building, I first align and then I join. Now you hotshots out there can try to do it all, which is just being really fancy and being very knowledgeable about join. You can do it with just join, but believe me, your life will be easier if you do it with a line <clears throat> and then you define the rotational points and the connections using join. Okay, so you see, I would never be able to slide this around and get it perfectly in place. So this is what I would do. I would come in and I would start with modify a line. Now I'm going to define right relationships between related parts right relationships between related parts. Okay, what do I know? <clears throat> I know I want the inside of this gear aligned with the outside of the hub. Now understand you can't align in one, in one step all the time. So I'm gonna say I want to align the inside of the gear with the outside, boom. Now what is good? If you look from the top, I am perfectly sitting over that hub. But what happened? It just moved over there. It moved over there without really thinking about the up and down. It just, you know, it's like sliding at a random position up and down, but that's okay. It got aligned. But now I can see if I want to align the bottom face of the gear to the top face of this, the problem is it's going to be hard for me to get to that position. And so I'm going to start over and I'm going to start by getting the height right <coughs> and then I will get it centered on the hub. Now I could have fixed it, but I'm just going to show you that this is a better way to do it. So what am I going to do? I am going to align and this time I'm going to align a face, that bottom face, <clears throat> to the top face of the base. Okay, now let's look at it. Boom, you see that is perfectly aligned. Now that that is perfectly aligned, I am going to say that I want to now have, I want to now have, and I'm going to go ahead and say okay, and I'm going to do a line again. Sometimes you can do multiple aligns without saying OK, but I'm just going to do it with multiple aligns. And so what am I going to say? I want that now aligned to this. <clears throat> Don't panic. When I do this, it might decide to go ahead and put it down again. But if it does, we'll fix it. OK, that's what I was afraid of. And so the way I'm going to fix it now is I'm going to say align this top face to the top of this. Okay, now it's up there and now I should see a tiny gap under there 
And now I can do one more alignment. Okay, I can do one more alignment of the bottom face of the gear to the top face. Okay, and boom. Now I am in the right position. This is sitting on this. <clears throat> this is sitting on this, and it is in the right position. Okay, it is aligned. But what did I do wrong? I put it in the wrong place. So I'm going to have to come. I put it on the I put it on the wrong one. So what I'm going to do is this will just be good practice. What are we going to do? We are going to modify and we are going to align and I am going to align. I am going to align. Uh, I think I need to turn my uh, body off. I need to turn my base off. So I will come over here and it would be here. I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to say I want this, and then I'm going to turn it back on, and I'm going to say I want it here. It might drop it. Don't panic if it drops it. Nope, it didn't drop it that time, so that's good. But if it does drop it, just do an, another alignment. So that is pretty good, and that is in the position we want. Now we want to do this one, so I'll come up, and I will say align, and I might as well just say align <clears throat> this to this. Okay, and now I'm going to align this to this. I'm going to say, okay, now that's up a little bit too high. Hey, you know what I think I can do? Somebody tell me the smart thing I can do this time that's easier than trying to get under it. I could say align this to this, and then boom, I have the thing assembled. <coughs> but when I look at that assembly, what is wrong? When I look at the assembly, what is wrong? That those gear teeth are occupying the same physical space. So what do I need to do with this component or this body? I need to rotate it. How do I rotate it? Rotation is an absolute position. So I'm going to come up, right, right mouse click and what? Move copy. What do I want to do? I want to do a rotation. I want to do a rotation of, I'll do a body because this is a body. I want to rotate this body and then <clears throat> select the axis. So I'll select it. And the way I select the axis, I'm just going to select this circle. And that will be the axis of the circle will be the axis of rotation. I'm going to look from the top. And this freehand, it makes pretty big jumps. And so I'm going to play by just typing it in here. What if I said 10 degrees up? That's not very good. What if I said 11? That's not good. 12. Okay. 13. Okay. How about 13.5? 13.7? 13.8? Let's try 14. 14.5. Sometimes you've just got to kind of <clears throat> kind of trial and error. Ooh, that, that was not good. 15. Okay. 15 degrees looks like really good. You can see the gaps are kind of evenly spaced. Now you see between the tolerance that I used of the backlash that I used and the fact that I scooted these post apart with 0.2 tolerances, I've added a lot of tolerance where that looks a little bit sloppy, but I like to start a little sloppy when I'm 3D printing and then we can tighten it up after we've done it one time. Okay. And now you see we had an unexpected result. When I did that, it seemed to have forgotten my align and seemed to switch back where it used to be. And so what I'll do is I'll just align it again. And what I'm going to do is I will say align and then I'll take this and I will align it to this. Then it put it down again, which is okay. I'm going to take this and I'm going to align it to this. And now, hopefully, we have the whole thing put together. So when you're moving back and forth between align and move, if some, something unexpected happens, you can just fix it like I just did. Okay, what do we have here? We have a fully assembled model. And we could show that to someone. They could say, okay, small gear driving big gear. So this is the way you have to think. When do you use move? <clears throat> when you want to put something in an absolute position. When do you use a line? You use a line when you want to define a right relationship 
between related components like you saw me just do. Now, what is join? I like to think of join as not putting things in position, but I like to think of join as defining motion. Okay, so align to get them into position and then join to show motion. <clears throat> so let me show you what I mean. I'm going to come up now to assemble and I am not going to do joint. I am going to use an as built joint. Why as built? Because it's already in the right position and the as built joint is much easier to use. So I'm going to say make an as built joint, select the component. Well, I am going to select this. OK, and then I am going to select this. OK, but and now what it wants is now you see you say, well, well, wait a minute. Now what? There's nothing else here to select, but there is a secret selection that you don't see. And if you just look at your mouse, it says <coughs> place the joint origin of the component. Now, you see, I selected the first component that I wanted to make a joint and the second component I wanted to make a joint, but it doesn't let me click OK. And I've selected everything here. And this is the annoying thing because you'll drive crazy. You'll be driven crazy if you don't see this. There is a third selection you have to make and it's not shown here. But remove your hand from the mouse. Just leave it there. And then if you wait a few seconds, it shows you the secret message. Oh, by the way, you have to show it where the joint origin is. That is kind of like the axis <clears throat> that you're going to rotate around. So I want this a center point. So you see like there is a center point right there of the circle. And I say do that. Boom. Look at that. So the reason you guys have trouble with this joint and this construction is there are hidden things you have to do that are not shown on the main menu there. OK, so that is great. Now I have another joint that I have to define. So what do I do? I assemble an as built joint. It is going to be between what and what between this and this. All right. Now I've selected the two components. What do I need? I got to give it the hidden option. Where are we rotating around any one of the center points of any of these cylinders or circles? Like right there, you see how it kind of snaps to the center point right there. Now that is good. All right. <clears throat> now, the problem is if I came over, you notice now that I have this new section over here called joints. And inside is Rev1, which was this one, and then Rev2, which was this one. Well, what if I come up? I can animate the model, but what's wrong? This is spinning, but it's not driving the other gear. It's spinning, but it's not driving the other gear. So what do I want to do? I can escape to stop it. I want to define a relationship between this body's motion and this body's motion. All right. Again, <clears throat> assembly and joints are about moving things. And now I'm going to define the relationship between two moving objects. And I'll do that in a symbol. And I want to create a motion link. And what do I want to have a link between between this one, which was already selected and this one? OK, so I got to make sure that one's selected. Now they're both selected and now they both rotate. What's wrong? They're not rotating in a physically possible direction. It's like the gears are running into each other. So on the bottom one down here, I want to reverse. Now they're going the same direction. The problem is they're going the same speed and two gears against each other like this would not be going the same speed. And so I know there's a factor of two difference in the speed. And so the second one, when the first one goes 180, the second one would go twice that far. And so that would make it 720. OK, and now they're moving together. I could also make this one 360 like it was. And I could make this one, what, 180. And now, once again, they are moving correctly. <clears throat> All right. 
Now, if I wanted to have this in a presentation and I wanted to show the motion, I can come over here and if I do Rev1 and I say Animate Model, look at that. Now that's good, but the problem is it's moving too fast because I'm moving the first gear and then it's driving the second gear too fast. So I think it works better if we come here and then we say Animate the Model. Okay, now look at that, boom. And you could even move it around and show, look at that beautiful involute behavior. And uh, <clears throat> that is just really, really great. So now you know the difference between move and align and join. And uh, which I think is under construct. So maybe I should start saying, I'm sorry, assemble. So the difference between move and align and assemble and under, under assemble, the thing that you're doing is you're doing, doing joints. Now, <clears throat> know the right tool for the right application. Move is when you want to put something somewhere specific in absolute space. The most overlooked while at the same time, the most valuable tool in this is the align feature. And I was not aware of it for my whole Fusion 360 career. And I was trying to use move and join, move and join. And it was a maddening process. The missing element is align. Align is your friend. And if you get good at align, you'll really make this easy. You saw as I was doing this, there were a couple of glitches along the way. There were a couple of glitches along the way, but if it didn't go where I wanted it to, I could just try another align and then I could get it to pop back to where I wanted it to. And so for instance, if you move the inside of the gear to the hub, you're specifying inside of gear to hub, but it's ambiguous where it is up and down. It's like an unconstrained model. So you've got to do an additional constraint that will lock it in up and down. Does that make sense? Think of a line as constraints in the 2D level. <clears throat> Okay, I want to show you some more things because I want to deliberately show you how you can get goofed up. So let's say I wanted to make a double level gear where this gear and this gear make one gear that, you know, for like a gearbox, you have gears that are on top of gears that are firmly <clears throat> fixed together. They become one body. <clears throat> So how would I do that? I would want to align this to this, but I don't really, it's kind of hard to get at it. So the first thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is a move. So what am I going to move? I'm going to select this and then I want a coordinate axis to move and then I am going to move it up. All right. Is that good? <clears throat> now, what do I want to do? I want to <clears throat> align I want to align I'm going to say okay All right now I want to align this with this now I understand I have to I might move it I might have to move it up and down <clears throat> after I get it aligned on that hub but I want this on this hub instead of this hub so what do I do who is your friend your friend is align so I want this now I can even turn this off for a second to make it a little bit easier. And what is that? That one is the 24 tooth gear. And so I can come down over here to the 24 tooth gear and I can turn it off. And then I want this aligned to this. And then afterwards I'll move it up. So I go boom <clears throat> and nothing happened. This is why you want to die. This is why when you're trying to learn Fusion 360 or die trying, this is why you die. Why? What I did two minutes ago no longer works now. <clears throat> okay. And this is what literally people get to this point and they give up on Fusion 360. <clears throat> but let me explain what's happening. Remember in our very early lesson where we had the circle and the circle was over the origin and then we couldn't move it no matter what we tried? Same thing here. No matter what you try, you're not going to be able to move that. Why? When you built this joint, you were putting what's equivalent to a constraint on the kind of X 
and Y position of this. We could move it up and down because it's still aligned with this axis. But this axis is serving as, this axis is serving as like a three-dimensional constraint or like a the 3D equivalent of the constraint in the 2D level. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of a line. And what do I need to do? I need to get rid of <coughs> that joint. That was joint two. And so I'm going to come over here to joint two and I am going to delete that joint. Yes, I want to delete it. Okay, now if you look, I just have one joint, which is this joint. Now I'm going to turn off that other gear. I'm going to turn off that other gear. And now who is your friend? Your friend is a line. I'm going to align this to this. All right, now, now that that's aligned, I think the easiest thing is for me to just move it up. So I'm going to move. And then what do I want to move? I want to move this and I want to move it up. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my body back on and I want this to be permanently affixed to this. So what will I do? I will align. And I think it's best sometimes to start with the one that's going to move because it's I want to go. I want the bottom face of this. That's the from to the top face of this and boom. Now I will be honest with you. I'm very, very much hoping. I am so much hoping that it stays there when I click OK, but it doesn't sometimes always boom. Look at that. OK, now what I want you to see is I've got this body that is part of this component. OK, I've got this body. I've got this body that is part of this component. And then I have this body that is part of this component. But I like to make bodies. I like to make one body out of something that is one physical piece. And so really this <clears throat> gear and this gear should be one body. How do I do that? My friend is <clears throat> join up here or combine. OK, so I want to use combine. Mine shows if it doesn't show, it should be under modify and you get come down to combine. Now, I want you to notice I have a body in spur gear 12 and I have a body in spur gear 24. I'm going to capture my position. That is a confusing thing, but you don't have to worry about it. It's just I usually always just capture the position. It allows you to go back and edit it later. It puts it on the timeline. <clears throat> so what do I want to combine together? I want to combine this body and this body together. And I don't want to make it a new component. And I, uh, I want uh, operation is join. OK, I want to join them into one body. Now I want you to see what happened. The 24 gear body disappeared and in the 12 gear, uh, the, the 12 tooth component, the body is now the combination of the two. So one of my bodies in this component disappeared and it became one body in this component. Does that make sense? Look at that. OK, look at that. So what I have shown you how to do is I've shown you how to make one. <clears throat> I've shown you how to make one body out of two bodies and I've shown you how to align them and then I've shown you how to join them. Now what we would want to do is we would want to come down here <clears throat> and we would want to extrude that out. like that and say OK. And now when this spins, that top one would spin because they're one body. Now let's go back over here and let's go to our joint that we have remaining. And what I can do is I can animate the model and nothing happens. 
Okay, maybe what I should do is I really probably need to redefine that. I need to redefine it because when I created a new body, maybe it kind of lost that, uh, it lost that relationship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to escape. <clears throat> that was a little, <clears throat> a little unexpected to me, so I'm going to delete. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble and I'm going to create an as-built joint. Okay, the component that I want is this one, and then I want to com I want to join it to this body. Okay, now I've got those two selected, and what I have to do now, <clears throat> I have to give it that magic third point that isn't, you know, that isn't uh, uh, always asking you for. So what I've got to do is I've got to come here and say, there it is, and boom. Okay, so I broke the joint when I brought the two bodies together. But now I can come in and I can come to this revolution and I can animate it. Okay, look at that. Guys, have we learned a lot in this lesson? <clears throat> Move is to put something in absolute position. Align is to define right relationship between related bodies or related components. Assemble or joining is to define joints. That is associated with motion. Very important. If you define a joint, you lose the ability to move or align that object or body unless you take that joint out. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay, I think you guys need a good homework assignment. And this homework assignment, I think I've given you what you need in order to do this. But what I need you to do is I need you to come and I need you to design, design, and then print, design and print this gearbox. Okay, <clears throat> this has big gears driving small gears and big gears driving small gears. So you are going to get speed amplification in this thing. <clears throat> and you can see for the component gears, I have one, two, three on this side and one, two, three on this side. You might not be able to do it in a single print. Now, what I want you to do is you have to assemble it and show it to me assembled. You don't have to animate it. Now, you can try to animate it if you want to, but the assignment is to get it assembled, and then the other assignment is to print it out and show a video of your deluxe Uber gearbox. Okay, does that make sense? You don't have to animate this, but you do have to assemble it. And this is really important because, guys, <clears throat> even today, as much as I've used Fusion 360, I'm not an expert at it, at this part of it. And sometimes I get an unexpected result about, you know, when I'm using, uh, you know, when I'm using aligns after moves and moves after aligns. But I'm to the point now I can always get it where I want it to be. Like you saw in this lesson at one point when I did an align, something jumped to a position I wasn't expecting. But you know, I, I aligned, I moved, and it jumped to a position I wasn't expecting. And so I just realigned it and everything uh, everything worked. And so, <clears throat> guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking this these lessons as I am making them. I'm going to go away now, and I am going to print my model. And then I'll show it to you next week. And then I want you guys to post your homework. When you post your homework, make sure you leave a link back to this video. And then in the comments down below, leave a comment with a link over to your YouTube video showing your solution to this. And so you can do this or you can take it further if you want. You know, if you wanted to like add a crank to the top so that you could crank it from the top and then the bottom one is really going fast. And you see that if I drove this gear, by the time you get here, this gear is going to be moving very, very slow. That would be increasing torque and decreasing for uh, decreasing speed. If I drew drove this gear, <clears throat> then by the time I get up here, by the time I get up here, I am increasing. 
I am increasing speed and I am decreasing torque. And you guys didn't see what I was talking about, did you? What I was saying is, is that if I drove this gear, then by the time I got all the way down here, this gear would be going very, very slowly. Okay. If I drove this gear, by the time I got down here, this gear would be going very, very fast, if that makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> so what I want you guys to do is I want you to design this. I want you to print it. I want you to build it. And then I want you to show me it working. All right, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. Man, I am just loving this. I'm loving taking a concept, realizing it in a using good engineering practices in Fusion 360, and then realizing a physical model using the 3D printer. If you like this lesson, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and engineering and 3D printing and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>